um, the legislation isn't really changing materially in relation to religious belief, but it basically pre um, prevents discrimination against individuals on the grounds of their religion or other similar type of belief, maybe a philosophical belief. In both cases, the tribunals found that their actions were not consistent with the employer's equality policies and to their duties to the public for providing such services and found that, therefore, the claims would fail because it wasn't just on the basis of their religious belief. It was in relation to the manifestation of their religious beliefs. And when you're looking at the manifestation of somebody's religious belief, you need to look at it in the context of well, how is it going to affect other people um, and is it in accordance with the employer or the service provider's own equality policy. In terms of the legislation itself, um, there are some technical changes, but overall the, the main protection is remaining the same for religious belief and philosophical belief. So what's the impact of this or the importance of it for people who, for example, say they're being denied um, the opportunity to wear religious dress in the workplace? In previous cases that were decided under the uh, religious belief regulations, they will still exist, they will still set a precedent for any future claims brought under the Equality Act. I mean, under the Equality Act and also under the religious belief regulations, there is um, some exceptions. And one of the exceptions under the Equality Act is going to be for religious organisations like the Catholic Church, who will be able to say that certain types of people cannot become, for example, priests. So they can exclude people on the grounds of their sexual orientation or because of their gender. Um, there is still some debate as to whether or not the church will have to still justify why they don't want a woman or why they don't want a gay man as a priest. That still remains to be seen whether or not they, the church does have to justify those points. Um, but the, but the, main, the main issue is that they, they are entitled to, um, to have occupational requirements. And you said not much changes, so if not much is changing, why are they being brought in? Well. There are, there are changes, there are some important changes, but they're more technical legal changes. Um, and the reason that the Equality Act is coming in is that at the moment there's something like 200 pieces of discrimination legislation. And the purpose is just to bring all of that legislation into one piece of legislation to make it much simpler, to make the tests across all strands of discrimination uniform to use the same kind of language for all aspects of it. Because obviously, for example, the Sex Discrimination Act was brought in in 1975. It's undergone various amendments through the years. The Disability Discrimination Act came in in 1995. It's had some aspects materially changed in recent times. So it's really just a consolidation of all of them to ensure that all of the, uh, legislation, all of the legislative flame framework covers the European legislative framework. So the Pope in Britain said that he was worried about the advance of secularism. Is this an example of that? No, I, mean, I don't think it is. I mean, the, the Equality Act protects people who, may feel, who feel they've been discriminated against on the grounds of their religious belief or if they have no belief. So it's really dignity for everybody. I mean, if someone is being discriminated because they hold a particular religious belief, they will have redress to a tribunal for that. If, however, they want to manifest that belief in a way that affects other people, then there needs to be some justification f for, for that treatment. So it's not, a case, it's not a case of secularism trumps religion, it's a case of dignity for everybody and trying to make it equal for everybody. And what's the most interesting aspect do you find of this area of work? Well, discrimination generally, I mean discrimination equality uh, law generally is an extremely interesting area it's complex it's fast moving but mostly it's it's there to promote equality for everybody and to promote dignity for everybody to make sure everybody in society they're all they're, everyone belongs to a gender or a race i mean everybody is therefore protected under this legislation um, one of the interesting areas um of this of religious belief discrimination i know is certainly in relation to muslim women wearing um the hijab is just just the head covering without the face being covered, and the um, burqa or the niqab is the full face veil. 
and there have been some cases as to whether or not women can wear them in certain occupations and it's been decided for example a teaching assistant she needs to be able to show her face or to communicate effectively with children yet she may be able to wear it in certain other types of occupation and that's because a large proportion of the uh, Muslim community do believe that head coverings and veils are part of their religion. Um, but in the case, for example, against British Airways, where a woman was not allowed to wear her, her cross at work, which incidentally British Airways did change their policy after that case, the uh, tribunal found that she wasn't entitled to wear her cross because it wasn't a requirement of the religion at large, so it wasn't something that Christians all believed should, or a, a proportion of Christians believed it was part of their religion. So I think it, it really does depend on what does the religion say um, in order to rely upon that as a genuine religious belief. One of the new aspects of the Act is going to be perceived discrimination. So if someone has been discriminated against on the grounds that they have they are perceived to be, for example, Muslim or perceived to be another religion, even if they aren't, they have protection under the legislation for any discrimination they've suffered. So, for example, a non-Jewish person who was victim of an anti-Semitic comment yeah. could claim religious discrimination, yes. even if they weren't Jewish. Yes, that's right. And likewise, a Sikh man who was mistaken for Muslim and abused as a result yes. of that mistaken belief yes. or, or discriminated against. Yes, that's correct. And uh, just, just to be clear, that we are generally talking in the employment context, but it's also broadened out to service providers as well. So service providers cannot discriminate on the grounds of religious belief either. So, for example, a bed and breakfast couldn't turn away um, certain people because of their religion or because they perceive them to be of a certain religion.